So now that you worked it out, I hope that you saw it was pretty easy by rewriting this, even though it's to the fourth. I know it wouldn't be too bad foiling, distributing it out, but still, we're looking at the big picture here. What if I asked you to do it to the 24th? No way that you're gonna to try to do that in this rectangular form. So first things first, we're gonna change it over, positive, negative, so I know I'm working in quadrant four. So to start, I will go right to, and then down to root three to then draw my right triangle and see if I can find my R and my theta. And as usual, I hope that you all see that yes, this is an A, this is an A root three, and therefore this would be two A. Those are some of those ratios that we're familiar with. If not, remember you can always use the Pythagorean theorem to find your R and your inverse tangent to find, since we got our Y over X. And don't forget this thing should have been negative, right? If you are gonna use your inverse tan just to make sure that you're in the proper quadrant. Either way, finding a reference angle, hopefully you see that that is 60 degrees, which means since A is two, we know that this would be a radius of four. So I can rewrite this as my R cis theta. But be careful, if you put 60 there, remember that is just your reference angle. To get all the way around to there, we'd have to go 360 degrees and then back 60, which would have given us 300 degrees, okay? So again, just be very careful with some of these things. That's why we've already studied these in this form of polar and rectangular and moving from one to the other, because now remember they asked us to raise that whole thing to the fourth. And in order to do that, I know that I'm going to have to take this thing and raise my R to the fourth, and then multiply to get quite a large angle of 1200 degrees. So when I raise four to the fourth, hopefully you know that that is 256, otherwise plug it into your calculator, and then 1200 degrees is not one of my favorites, even though I don't mind it. Because I don't wanna to have to go around my circle that many times to end up at the same point I could go by just doing what? And hopefully you figured it out. What angle measurement would 1200 be? So I know I can take away some of those circles that we've already gone around and I could do it as many times as I want. And hopefully you remember some of these from early, early on. 360, that's definitely not enough. So if I actually did 360, how many times could I subtract that from 1200 to get something that's between zero and 360? And hopefully you remember that 1080, going around three times would already give me a number that would get me to a lot better co-terminal angle. So when I'm subtracting there, I take 120 minus eight and I get 120 degrees. So that 1200 degrees is equivalent to simply going around 120 degrees, which would put me in quadrant two with quadrant two with a 60 degree reference angle. And so I know the expansion of this, 256 cosine of that 120 degrees plus 256i sine of 120 degrees. When I evaluate, I'll get negative something for cosine and positive something for sine. And because I know that that is a 60 degree reference angle, I then know those would give a value of one half there. So I'll throw that over one when I'm multiplying and root three over two there. Again, keeping my numerators and denominators separate. Simplifying that mess, I get a final answer that would give me the rectangular form that they asked for very simply 
by taking half of 256. And I know half of 200 is 100, half of 50 is 25, and half of six is three. So that would be negative, don't lose the sign, 128. Everything over here is positive. Half of 256 we already did, so we don't have to think and do it again. But don't lose the I with your root three. So 128, 128 I root three. And it makes sense that our numbers are getting much larger because we're raising these things to the fourth and fifth and nth powers. So again, this time they want us to ask if we can see what the fourth roots are of this complex rectangular number. And of course, if they want us to put it back in that form at the end, fine. But the way that it's written right now, it is going to be much, much simpler for us to actually rewrite it in its polar form or identity rather than its rectangular. So first things first, I know since this is negative and that's negative, looking at what quadrant I would be in, I'm in quadrant three. And if I was to draw this out, I'd have to go left, 128 units, and then down 128 root three units. And in order to draw this into my right triangle to get my theta and my R, again, this is why I reviewed the 45, 45, and 30, 60, 90. These can be utilized very nicely and easily if you recognize that this is an A, this is an A root three, and this is a two A. Which means therefore this is a 60 degree, remember reference angle, that's not the angle that we're actually going to use to get to this point, all right? But we then found our A is 128. If you double that, from the previous example that we did a little while ago, we just took half of 256 and found it was 128. So pretty simple stuff. A lot of repetitive numbers because of the reference angles, 45, 30s, and 60s. So I can now take this original form that they gave me and in order to find the fourth roots of it, I will then say, well, I can rewrite that as R cis theta raised to the one fourth. And in order to do that, we found our R was 256. And careful, our theta from here all the way to 180 plus 60 more would be 240 degrees. Don't put 60 there. All right. And before I give them those answers, remember, I will take this and add in so that I can get all four roots, I will add in 360 K times. And now, and only now, will I apply De Moivre's theorem to get all of my possible answers. So I will take the one fourth and raise it to that, and the fourth root of 256 is four. To get my angles, I will take one fourth of that and that angle. And I know four goes into 24 six times and zero, zero times. And four goes into 36 nine times and zero times. And so this would be what my final answer looks like in polar form which unfortunately they wanted in rectangular form. And I would use K being the number of times that I would have to add 360 to get those co-terminal angles, which remember, it's not gonna be 360 anymore because we divided it by four. So I wouldn't have to do it at all to get my first one. And then to get my others, I know they all would also be four cis something. And to get that something, we said that we would just add 90, however many times less one of the number of roots they want. So I will go around and add that extra 90 once, which when I add 90 to that, I get 150. And remember to add 90, it's very easy. Just add 100 and subtract 10. 
So that would give me, if I added another 90 to that, 250 less 10, which would be 240, 340 less 10, which would be 330. And again, that would be okay with me as far as where you stop. But if you're using a software program that asks for things in, which this one did, rectangular form, you'd have to expand all of those out and evaluate to condense and put it in rectangular form. All right. So for this example, I will just write out the answers right here so that you guys have them just to check. Um, but otherwise, that is how you attack these nth roots using Demoivre's theorem. And so there's the final form that they would want them in separated by commas for the answers. Okay. So the last example I have for you all is a different form. So I'm going to do two just to make sure that you got this type down and then we'll call it good. You guys just need to go and practice. Uh, so this one asks us to find the complex numbers and then graph them as vectors. So the only reason I added that part in is I wanted to show you something that it's kind of cool result of all of this graphically. Okay. Now these are a little bit weird. The one prior to the actually two prior to this just flat out told us find this many roots. Find this many roots. So we knew exactly how many answers there were. And it was basically already set up for us, whether it was in rectangular or polar form. This one now gives it to us in an equation form. So if you were to solve an equation, you know that the first step would be to getting the x by itself. In this case, add 16 to both sides. And then you'd have x to the fourth equals 16. Then to get the x by itself, you know to get rid of the power, you'd have to do the root of that. And since it's a fourth power, we'd have to take the, what did you just say? That's what I thought you said, the fourth root. So even though they didn't flat out say it like they did here, fourth roots, you then have to see that this ultimately is asking the same thing. Okay, So we're virtually just being asked to find the fourth roots of this complex number. And again, you might be looking at this and saying, that's not complex, Alan. I actually know the fourth root of 16. And you're right. It's what? Hopefully you said two. But remember, that's only one solution. They wanted all, and there could be complex solutions, those ones that use imaginary numbers. So unfortunately, we don't get to just stop there and give them the one real number answer. We got to give them all the complex numbers. And we're going to do that by doing what they asked us to do, and that's finding the fourth roots of this complex number. Now, if you don't see the complex part, there you go. So in order to graph that and give myself a visual, I know I'm located 16 to the right. That would get me to that point, which means my radius is 16 and my angle theta would either be zero or 360. What would you rather use? Yeah, me too. I'd rather use zero degrees because 360, I'd have to go all the way around just to get back to this point. So I know that I now have my r cis theta form, and I know that I was asked to find the fourth root, which means I'm going to raise this whole thing to the one fourth power. And all we had to really do was fill in the blanks of what our r was, which we found was 16, and our theta which this one was pretty easy because it only had a positive real number. We went to the right, which meant we didn't have to rotate any angle around. And that's it. We're going to attack it the same way as we did before. But before we do anything as far as applying to Moff's theorem, I will rewrite this with the alternative angles we called coterminal angles to the reference angle we found of zero. So we'll add that 360, that K times, and now, and only now, will I raise this 
one fourth power by applying de Moivre's theorem to both the exponent of my r and the multiple of my angles. So 16 to the one fourth and dividing each of my angles by four. And so the roots of these would be written in general as 16 to the one fourth or the fourth root of 16, which would be two cis, my theta would still be zero, but instead of actually adding 360, because I need to get four answers, I'd have to divide that by four. And I know four goes into 36, nine times and zero, zero times. And I would let K be zero, one, two, and three to get my one, two, three, four answers. That's it, other than the finishing touches. Of course, we would have to expand this out and give them all four answers. So that would yield my first answer of being two cis zero. And my other three also being two cis. But then adding that extra 90 one, two, and three times. So that's pretty easy because we start at zero, adding 90, that's just gonna take us to our quadrantal angles. So that's gonna be 90, 180, and 270. Notice we didn't go all the way back around to 360 because we already have that point. So then just taking this and expanding it out, pretty simple. Again, I would allow you guys to leave those as answers if it was a free response question on the test. Uh, otherwise, my math lab, your quizzes, whatever you may be working on, um, they asked for, in this case, rectangular form. So these would be all of our answers in rectangular form if we expanded out and evaluated the angles 0, 90, 180, and 270. Now, one last thing they did ask us to do for this was they asked us to graph as vectors in our complex plane. So doing it for this one is very easy and obvious. Look at what our answers were, right? Two, two i, negative two, and negative two i. So if we were to graph those, we obviously would be on our complex plane and we would be out in every direction, two. So right two, up two, left two, and down two. And if you notice when you graph those, again, they asked us as vectors, that one would be there, 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 and there. And notice they're all separated by 90 degrees. And they will always have that symmetrical feel, that look to it, no matter what your angle is. So just to show you, I gave you one more example for you guys to try on your own. So this would be a great time to pause it and see if you can do that exact same thing we did. And then I'll go over it with you and then you can go practice on your own when you have time. All right, so hopefully you did all right with that. Um, let's go through it very quickly and take a look. First step would be to get it in the form where we can get the x by itself to find all of those answers, solutions, what we're gonna then call roots, because that's exactly what we have to do to get that x by itself is we'd have to take the sixth root in order to find it. And so we're going to end up dealing with the sixth root of zero plus a negative i or zero minus i. Now that allows us to see it as a complex form. And again, graphically, knowing that that would mean I'm not on the real I'm on the imaginary axis. And because it's negative, I'm gonna be heading down. How far? Hopefully you said just one tick mark, and that would be my negative i. So we just found our radius again is one, and to get all the way around to there, I'd have to go 270 degrees for my theta. So setting this up to start, I know my r is going to be one, Cis, I know my reference angle theta is going to be 270 degrees. 
but because we've been doing these now, I know I'm gonna have to add 360 as many times as I have to, because I know I'm gonna have to raise this to the one sixth power, not sixth. It's the sixth roots that we're dealing with here, okay? So that's pretty much the setup on this. Uh, doesn't get much easier because our R is one. We can then distribute and raise it to the one sixth power, which means the sixth root of one, any root of one is one sis. And then don't forget, we're gonna distribute through by one sixth to each of those. And that would then give me my angle measurements for any of these roots. Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, Z5, and Z6. And in this case, when we divide the 60 into the 27, let's just look at that. I know it goes in four times, which would be 24. So we'd have three left over, bring down the zero, six goes in that five. Nice reference angle that we're used to dealing with. But don't forget, instead of adding 360 to that, that would not give me enough answers within one circle. So we also had to divide that by six, and that's pretty easy. We can see that that would be 60. In our K, because there was sixth roots, means that we'd go all the way up to the number five. All right, so in order to get all of my answers, I'd have to take that original, which is one sis. for all of those. And then the only thing that's going to change is the angle, starting with my reference for my first one, and then adding 60 each time. So adding 60 to that, and notice that not only are all of my angles between zero and 360, they also would yield a separation of 60 degrees for each one of these if I was to graph them. And so it would look very similar to this scenario, but starting at a 45 degree angle. And I'd have something like that with, of course, a radius of one for each one of those, which doesn't look like I did very good on that. <laughs> so remember, I would be fine with you guys stopping there because that's enough work and it shows me that you know how to apply De Moivre's nth root theorem. But remember to read the directions because they may ask you to put it in rectangular form, which would require you to expand and evaluate both cosine and then I sine of that 45, 105, all the way on up to 345 degree angle. All right, so not too bad. Hopefully you understood the concepts and everything on how we find all of our nth roots on, and simply just by applying that de Moivre theorem, but with fractional exponents, we call rational exponents. Okay, so hang in there, almost done, only one section left. So we'll have a lot of fun with that last video, but keep working hard, finish strong. I'll see you guys all soon. Take care.